All right, so we'll take a peek at this thing in a few minutes after our scripture. First, what the heck? All right, let's see. Have y'all seen this before? Who did this mess? Who did this? Cody, did you make this mess? Murphy, did you make this mess? Man, did you make this mess? Somebody made it. Who made it? Who made this mess? What do y'all think of that? <laughs> if dogs feel guilt, do you think people do? Unless you're a sociopath? All right. Let's read this. Lucy, por favor. So yeah, underline that part. We know when we do wrong, don't we? That's why you feel bad. All right. Lucy, who's praying today? Oh, wait for Katie. Katie's very, very involved in something else right now. Almost there. Okay, good. Amen. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. All right, cool. So we'll talk about this thing in just a second. First, let's go over this very, very quickly, OK? OK, national income inclu includes corporate income. Um, you know, I guess that, yeah, corporate plus us. So I want to just get this personal income. So I'm going to I'm going to remove undistributed corporate profits, corporate income taxes, social security taxes, but then I'm going to add transfer payments. Okay? Which we'll talk about those in a little while as well. Anyway, that all gets us to our personal income. Personal income is what you can buy stuff with, what you can put in the piggy bank, or what you use to pay your taxes. Uh, transfer payments. And then finally, our disposable income. This is the number I wanted to get us to. Because personal income is nice, but you've got to remove taxes. And then that gives you your disposable income. And then guess what that drives us all the way back up here to? Yeah. So the disposable income is going to take us all the way back up here. And it's going to impact that consumption number. OK? So again, it's just the relationship here. I don't, I'm not going to have you memorize all this, just the first one, okay? I just wanted you to see that there's a whole bunch of other numbers that economists look at that, that will lead us to our disposable income, which then takes us all the way back up here to the biggest part of GDP, which is consumption spending, okay? So I'm going to roll on. What? There's not, there's just C. It's just C. No, DI leads us back to that because we can spend it or save it. When we spend it, it becomes consumption. Okay? All right. So why are we studying all this? See these guys? Okay, that's si Simon Kuznets. He, he developed GDP. And then this guy, Sir Richard Stone, he came up with the other stuff, the national income accounting. So just a little history there. After World War II, no, you don't need to know this. After World War II, these guys just decided to come up with these numbers to help figure out how nations are doing economically speaking. Okay? All right, cool. Oh, what you thought was you? All right, so GDP can be measured either by total spending on U.S. production, that's what we're going to focus on, or you can add up total income received from that production, okay? That's a little more complicated. Or you can do total value added during production. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the expenditure approach is what we're going to cover in class. This is the main one we're going to do. 
And all you do is add up consumption plus investment plus government purchases plus net exports, okay? So it adds up all spending on production in the economy, okay? The income approach adds up all the aggregate income earned from that production. So do you remember when we did the circular flow and we would sell our land, labor, capital, entrepreneurial ability? Do you remember that? In return, we would get rent, wages, interest, and profits. So anytime, if, like if we wanted to do this, a simple way to add up for the income approach would be just add up the rents, the wages, the interest, and the profits earned. Okay? It's a little more complicated than that, which is why we don't actually do it that way. Then you've got the value added approach. All right, this just adds up the value that every step of the production process adds to the production. Okay? The value added is just a whole bunch of more numbers that leads us right back to the expenditure approach. So the easiest way to do it, expenditure approach. You've got four numbers that we add together, and that gives us our GDP. Okay? So example on the value added approach. Farmer produces wheat, okay? That value is added to GDP. Then the miller takes the wheat and adds some value to it, right? He turns it into flour, sells it for more than what he paid for it. Whatever that difference is, that adds to GDP. And then the, he sells it to the baker. The baker will take that flour and convert it into bread. He'll sell it for more than he paid for the flour. So that difference gets added to GDP. And then your grocery store sells it to you. They're going to add their profit and all the distribution costs to it. And that's going to add to GDP. By the time you add all these four numbers up, though, you're going to get the exact same number that the expenditure approach gives you on the final good. Okay? So we'll, we'll explore all of this. Okay? But just know that there's three methods to, to calculate GDP. Okay? The one we're going to use is this one. But then you need to be aware that income earned also adds to GDP. Okay? Or value added during production adds to GDP. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, they just want you to recognize that income, in fact, I don't even think they do this one. This is just added bonus for you, because I love you. Okay? You're welcome. No, it's, it's because I love you. High bar, not sadistic jerk. Y'all are wrong. All right, so, so your book does go into these two, okay? Expenditure versus income approach. The numbers for the expenditure approach are these four. Pretty simple? Okay. The income approach requires you to look at wages, that's your comp compensation of employees, the rents for land, the interest for capital, proprietor's income is profit for the entrepreneur, but then we also have corporate profits, corporate income taxes, dividends, undistributed corporate profits, national income, indirect business taxes, and so on and so on. There's a lot more numbers, but they add up to the same thing, don't they? Okay, so which one do you like better? All right, that's what we're going to do then. Okay. So now we're going to do an example, okay? We have an economy. Do you, all, do you all know where this economy is located? No, no. Here's a hint. Bikini Bottom, okay? So in one year, Bikini Bottom produces one, two, three Krabby Patties at a cost or a price of $2 each. So what is this economy's GDP for that year. You guys are brilliant. It is $6. Okay? We're just adding up the value of the production, right? Pretty simple? All right. Do you all remember what nominal GDP is from your vocabulary? Yes? No, it's with, in, it's with inflation before we adjust it. Then it says real GDP. Real GDP is without inflation, so it's removed. Okay? Now, for this first year, I don't have another year to compare it to. So the nominal and the real are the same. Okay? There is no inflation yet. Does that make sense? Okay, so nominal GDP is the same as real GDP for our first example. Now, year two. What happened to GDP now? It went up. Okay, so now it's six dollars and ten cents. All right. So if you knew nothing about economics, you would look at these two numbers and say, oh, the economy grew by 10 cents, right? But what did it really do? It shrank. It shrank a lot. In fact, if we wanted to calculate the real GDP, remembering that it is 
without the inflation, okay, it's four dollars. Tell them how you got four dollars. Because the original price was only two dollars, and the only reason it went to three is because there were five because of inflation. Yeah. So we just took a dollar five of the inflation out of here. We just converted these to two dollars each. Equals four dollars. Okay. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Well, in our in our what we're going to do next time is I'm going to give you a formula that would actually do this with a with a multi-trillion dollar economy instead of just the Krabby Patties. So in this example, it's real easy. We just take the two and convert it to two down here, and then we remove the inflation. Okay. Now, what if what if year two was our base year? Then we would inflate these. But don't worry about that. I'm just telling you. Okay. Yeah. So you'll be told. Or, or you'll be given other uh, other indicators, yeah. Okay, good question. All right, so is that is that cool, guys? So this is, I'm just trying to illustrate to you that there is inflation every year, and so if you don't remove the inflation to calculate GDP, nominal GDP will give you a misleading, you know, it'll give you misleading information. So that's why we can't do that, okay? By the way, this is called a recession. And anytime output goes down, it's a recession. There's a little more to it, but we'll look at that another day. Nah, it's too much work for me to print those out. Yeah, you guys can do it if you like them, or you can write your regular notes. Because you know, it's if I print 129 of them, it's it could be wasteful. Um, not really. I did know. I do know that people who take notes by hand do better. Yeah, have some of it written down. Yeah. All right, but like people who type their notes, they usually don't do as well. So anyway, so just saying. They maybe. And by the way, that doesn't mean every individual doesn't do as well as every other individual. I'm saying, if like for example, Beagle, if she hand wrote her notes, she would do better than the Beagle that types her notes. Does that make sense? I think so. Studies show it. All right. There's a number called GNP. Okay, this is what used to be used. Okay, but back uh, pre-1990, we actually used to look at the number for GNP, which is gross national product. It's a little bit different, but the numbers are really, really close to the same. All right, but GNP, it's focusing on the ownership of the of the uh, means of production. So, for example, Coca-Cola producing in China would add to America's GNP but the production that they do in China would add to China's GDP. Okay, so there's, that's the main difference. Okay, GNP deals with citizenship, not geography. GDP deals with location. Okay, so it's whatever's produced here, regardless of citizenship, it gets added to our GDP. Okay? It, no. It, it could be higher or lower, but the difference, check it out, is two tenths of one percent usually. Okay. Now, why do you suppose it is that we switched and started looking at GDP? I, I'm, I'm, I don't know the true answer, but I'm guessing what I think it is. What did you say, Dutra? All right, you could think of it that way. Here's what. I, here's the way I thought of it. Whatever's produced here creates jobs here. And so that, to me, that's a better indicator of our, of our economic health. For example, what if, what if GNP was like, I mean, we produce everything overseas. That would produce no jobs here. So we could have a huge GNP number, but like, how, does that, how does that help us? Okay. So GDP is more important. All right. Here is GDP by the decades. By the way, do you all know what this means, B, uh, BY2000? Huh? Base year. I'm going to find nickels. I forgot. i got to get you all nickels. All right. So, so Lindsay, what does that mean? Uh, that's not exactly it. What it means is, yeah, all of these dollars are converted to the value of the dollar in the year 2000. That's what that means. All right. 
so. I don't know. I didn't hear it. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So, so despite any of all that stuff, guys, it doesn't really matter. Are y'all impressed with this kind of growth? Because this is this is the same 865 billion that 865 billion is worth today, or at least in 2000. Well, I don't know, but we've removed the inflation, so it doesn't matter. Does that make sense? I don't know anything about that. But that's why we remove the inflation so that we can compare actual years. Okay? All right, so here we go. Breaking it down. Consumption. This is the first and biggest category of the expenditure approach to, to learning GDP. Okay? It includes durable consumer goods. So these are things that are produced here, okay, that are durable. And what we mean by durable is it's going to last longer than a year. Okay? So the computers that you use, the cars you drive, uh, any kind of machines you all have at home, those are all durable goods. Okay, they're usually also the more expensive type of goods. Then we have non-durable goods. This is just your food, clothing, um, toilet paper, well, whatever. Some, you know, for some of us, fashion changes every year, so my clothes don't last more than a year. I try to, I just try to stay trendy. But yeah, you're right. But still, you know, I have this. This tie is about a year, about a year old, actually. All right. Now check it out, guys. Out of the 100% of consumption spending, we've only covered what 41%. So what's the rest? All right. How about this? Services. Okay. You ever have your car fixed? Okay, when you pay the mechanic, you're paying for his service. Okay, anybody ever have braces? Okay, you're paying the orthodontist for his service. And lastly, anybody ever need legal help? Okay, so if you need legal help, you're paying a lawyer for his services. You could also think of like FedEx when you use them. Um, you call a plumber, you get your lawn mowed, pool boy, whatever. All of that stuff is services. So the largest portion of our of our consumption part of GDP is actually for services. Okay. All right. By the way, last thing, because this is the largest part of GDP, that is why GDP is so dependent upon our consumption. Okay. If if we want the economy to get out of a recession, for example, it's it's largely dependent upon consumers going out and buying stuff. So what if taxes are raised on households? Is that good or bad for GDP? What's our answer? Katie, what do you say? If taxes are raised on households, is that good or bad for GDP? Corbin, what do you say? Edu educate her. Yeah. So since consumption is the largest part of it, when you, add, when you raise taxes on consumers, they're going to buy less, so it's actually bad for GDP. Now, there might be reasons why policymakers raise taxes, but they're definitely not to help GDP. Okay. All right, the next one's IG. This is gross investment. Okay, there's three subcategories for this. Okay, the first two are pretty straightforward. The third one is one that Corbin mentioned a little while ago. All right, first thing is business fixed investment. This is just when businesses buy tools. They buy a machine, a truck, a factory, any of that stuff. Okay, that's what we mean by investment. Everybody cool on that one? Purchase of capital is investment. All right, picture down here is a forklift. Then you've got residential fixed investment. So really, any construction is considered investment. All right. So um, a lot of times when the when the data comes out, they'll exclude residential investment from the number just so you can see how businesses are adding to investment. And then they'll also exclude the last one because really the first one is the one that's really important to us. Okay, I think you'll you'll know why in a minute. This is all IG. Yeah, this is all gross investment. Yeah. No, C's right here. C is inventory investment. So Corbin, you did mention this, right? S something's produced, but nobody's bought it yet. 
GDP is the value of everything produced, so it includes inventory. Okay, a couple other terms here. Uh, anytime inventories go up, we're going to call that investment. Okay. Anytime inventories go down year to year, we'll call that negative investment. All right, or disinvestment. Disinvestment. There's actually a very technical term or de technical definition for this. Okay. So in 2013, something's produced but not sold. All right. It's added to GDP under the investment category. 2014, that thing that was already counted in 2013 gets sold. Okay. It's reduced. It's it's uh, subtracted from GDP, and that process is called disinvestment. I've got an example. All right. So far, so good. So three types of investment: real investment, which which is the purchase of, of real capital. Then you've got construction. Then you've got inventory. All right. Good? All right. So, Corbin, you mentioned this. In fact, I, I think that may be word for word what you asked. It's pretty close. All right. Have you all ever, OK, did we have spam in this class? OK, so you all know it's really good, OK? Well, here's an example. Tom Thumb buys a truckload of spam worth $25,000. They can buy a truckload. This is all real spam. Okay? They sell 15,000 of it to consumers in 2013. Okay? So, quick question. So, they buy 25,000. They only sell 15,000 of it. How much of that 25,000 counts as consumption for GDP? All right, good. Not all of it. And then, Corbin, you were right. The remaining 10,000 that's left over goes towards investment. It just gets split among the categories. Yeah, so it just gets split among the categories. Okay? Not yet. No, it, it wasn't subtracted. But let's see what happens next. The remaining $10,000 worth of spam is sold in 2014. Okay? Those transactions are added to GDP as consumption in 2014, okay? But then it's removed from GDP, from investment. That process is called disinvestment, okay? No, it's a net zero. Yeah, so let's, yeah, so we end up with consumption of 10,000. By the way, there's, there's also, you know, margins and stuff like that for profit, but we're just assuming everything is, you know, straightforward. And then negative 10,000 on investment. So the net effect on GDP is zero. It has to be zero because that stuff got counted in GDP the year before. Okay? You can't count it twice. Yes, ma'am. No, it actually removes it. Yeah. No, it, it, it already got counted in 2013. Everybody clear on that? Okay. So all we're doing is we're recounting it as consumption the following year, but then removing it from investment the following year. So the net effect is zero. Okay. If ish, it it does impact the consumption number for 2014, but we remove it from investment. That way, the net is only counted in the previous year. We don't. It doesn't add to total GDP at all. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Rachel. So it's not counted in the GDP until it gets into the credits account in the year that it was produced? No, it got counted in 2013. This is just an accounting gimmick, okay? Because Tom Thumb is selling it, it gets reported as consumption, all right? But then it's got to be removed from GDP because it can only count one time. But it, it counted in 2013. All right? Yeah, spam. All right, can we talk about real investment again? Okay, this is Aiden. All right, here's a formula you can write down. Okay, net investment. By the way, net investment is abbreviated IN is equal to gross investment minus depreciation. Okay, so. And, and I told you I would remind you what depreciation is. It's not like currency going down in value. 
it's when capital wears out. Okay, a way to think of it though is capital loses its value. Okay, it's only valuable if you can produce something with it. So when it wears out, it's lost its value. Okay, so for example, if I buy $2,000 worth of lawn equipment and $500 worth of it is depreciated, then my net investment is $1,500. Do y'all follow that? So the net investment is $1,500 found by taking the gross investment of $2,000 and subtracting the depreciation of $500. So example. Okay. At the beginning of the year, Aiden has four lawn mowers. Can everybody count them? Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, that means he can mow a certain number of lawns in the year because he has four pieces of capital equipment, right? All right. During the year, two of them die. Do y'all see that two of them died? Okay, that's called depreciation. All right, but then he goes off and he not only replaces the two, but buys an additional one. Okay, so his gross investment was three, right? What's his net investment? One, okay? He has positive net investment. So here's the question. At the end of the year, can he mow more or fewer lawns? More. What do you think that would look like in GDP? It gets bigger, right? Yeah, so the more you can produce means the bigger GDP can become. Okay, so we have a term for that. It's called increasing productive capacity. All right. Whenever businesses have a, a positive net investment, we have what's called increasing productive capacity. Okay, y'all good on that? By the way, what would cause Aiden to want to buy so many more lawnmowers? Yeah, he's got he's feeling good about business, right? That's why he would do it. All right. Positive productive capacity. Positive productive capacity. All right. The opposite happens. Two of them die, but he only replaces one. Okay. That means he has negative net investment of one. Can he pr can he produce as much now? Now he, now he's going to be mowing fewer lawns. That's called declining or decreasing productive capacity. Okay, that would be bad. Okay, so if so when, whenever we're looking at the investment numbers, if businesses are only replacing what's depreciated, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Good. So let's let's. Aiden's got more for you. Let's see. Do you think the economy is better off with positive or negative net investment? Positive. Okay. So gross investment is what we use to calculate GDP, but hidden in those numbers is our net investment, which is very important because that that can predict the future. Okay. If we only replace depreciated capital, there's going to be less growth in the future. If we not only replace what's depreciated, but then add to our capital stock. We're going to have more production in the future, so more growth. Okay. So graphically, the way it would look is like this: stock of capital is just a block. Think of the area as the amount of capital goods that exist in the United States. During the year, gross investment occurs of this amount, right? Another block. But then depreciation is half that block. So we have increased our stock of capital because net investment is positive or negative? Positive. Okay. All right, the G, government spending, okay? Sometimes I accidentally call it spending. It's, it's government purchases, all right? It's only purchases. So it's when they buy roads, okay? When the government builds roads, when they build warships or fund the police, that's all purchases, okay? It excludes transfer payments. So what are transfer payments? Here's, here's, a, here's why it's called a transfer payment, okay? The government receives taxes from one group, takes that money and transfers it to other groups, okay? So it's called a transfer payment, so it's like welfare, food stamps, social security, unemployment benefits, all, all of those things, okay? Medicare, Medicaid, those are all transfer payments. Okay, this has three subcategories. These subcategories are not hugely important for us. Okay, because it's all it all it's all bottom line. It's the government, but we have three governments, don't we? We have the federal, we have the state, and we have the local. Okay, so federal government makes up 40% of government purchases. Okay, so they're they're a big one. The 50 state governments and the local governments combined make up the other 60%. Okay, what's the biggest thing state and local governments spend money on? Any ideas? Roads, that's a big one. That's not it, though. 
schools. Okay. Did, did I give her one today? No, I'll give her one. I'm going to give her one. All right. So other examples, firemen, the military, uh, oh, hazmat suits for Ebola outbreaks, you know, all of that. All of those would be government purchases. No. All right. I saw this in the, on the news wire the other day. This is probably a week old. But Texas was recently named as the number one least socialist state in the country. Go Texas. Uh, it's a, here, I wrote this. It's actually a non-scientific way of determining this type of system. But they just did it as a percentage of, of our GDP that is our uh, taxes or government spending. Okay? Yeah. So our taxes are relatively low. 7% of our state GDP is based on government. The, you know, state of Texas government. Alaska was number one at 35%. So I guess, you know, it's like whatever. Did this add to GDP? Yes. Yeah, it adds to GDP. This is the Allen School District spending $60 million on a stadium. Yeah. Okay. This is something y'all might not realize. I know. Okay, 58 percent. Hey, 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 come back to class, Katie. Come back. All right. 58 percent of federal spending does not add to GDP. Okay? So does that surprise you all? So when you, when you think about it, if the government spends three and a half trillion dollars, what's 42 percent of that? Whatever that is, you know, one and a half trillion at the most is what's actually contributing to our GDP because the rest of its entitlements, which are those transfer payments, okay? All right, net exports. This is just our exports minus our imports. So everything we export out adds to GDP. Everything we import in subtracts from GDP. So we, we actually do export a lot of earth moving equipment to Brazil. What are they doing with it? Yeah, they're moving earth. They're tearing down the rainforest, okay? But then, we buy a BMW from Germany, that's our import. Okay, so exports minus imports will give us our net exports. That's pretty straightforward, right? Okay. So here's an actual pie or bar graph of GDP from 2012. Okay, we had consumption of 11.1 .1 trillion. That was six, almost 69% of our GDP. We had investment of two and a half trillion. Government spending of about 3.2 trillion export spending of one and a half trillion and then import spending of two trillion. So that's how it all, all broke down in 2012. Normally, I'm going to say normally, not for the last probably six or seven years, but normally if the economy is good and we're not at war, investment's bigger than government. Okay? When the economy's bad, I mean businesses don't have the incentive to invest, right? And at the same time, if the economy's bad, there's going to be more, more uh, government spending. Right, those don't count, okay? Why not? They're going to end up counting when those people spend it, okay? So if I get a welfare check, I'm going to go buy food. That's going to get counted as consumption. But the actual spending that the government did did, did not count, okay? Here's our annual GDP growth rate, okay? Typically speaking, we're, we consider our economy to be doing well if we're getting around 3.5% growth, okay? So this is just a, a chart showing you what's been going on. Look at the 80s, we're pretty high growth. The 90s were pretty high growth. The 2000s were a little, little under the three and a half range. And then the 2010s are even lower than that. So. What date did the debt rise? The debt right here, 2008. We started having the trillion plus deficits right there. All right. Here's a global perspective. So just to give you an idea how we compare to the rest of the world, this isn't something you've got to write down. It's just interesting. Okay, USA is still the biggest economy in the world. Okay? If Texas was its own country, we'd be right here. Not bad. Okay? California. Oh, by the way, I, this year, I think, I think this year we're actually going to surpass California. Texas will. So these, this is from 2011. So I should update this for 2013, 2014. Huh? Is, 
Uh, probably by now, yeah. Italy's had a rough time, though. All right. So anyway, we're, we're basically king of the world. Here's another way to look at that, that same data. Have you all heard of a cartograph? It's a map where the, the nations are sized based on their portion or proportion of whatever the overall data is. Yeah, Russia is this little light green spot. Okay, China's right here, but guess what this one is right here? Where my arrow is, what is that? That's South Korea. This is Japan. North Korea is that little sliver right up here. Okay? Look at poor Africa, though. Africa's sad. All right. And then I had a video. I don't think we have time for it right now. Yeah, it's the Hans. Yeah, the Gapminder video. It is interesting, though, that, that uh, per capita GDP and health, they are correlated. So the healthiest and wealthiest nations are up here, and then the poorest and unhealthiest are down here. We're this big uh, yellow dot right here. Okay? So we're not the healthiest, and we're not the richest. So the healthiest is Japan, the richest is Luxembourg. Or no, Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein's the wealthiest. Okay? Cutter's right here, pretty close to him. All right, so we'll skip that. All right, so now, let's go back to our definition for a second. Okay? GDP measures legal production in the U.S. during one year. All right? It's the value of all final goods and services. So final goods, that's important. Okay? It's got to be produced by workers and capital located in the U.S. Doesn't matter who owns it. So Toyota producing here adds to our GDP. Okay? Uh, General Motors producing in Europe doesn't add to our GDP. So it's, you know, it's got to be here. Um, that's good enough. Oh, and I should add the word legal, but you'll get that. All right. So what eight things do not count? All right, y'all need to be aware of this because, you know, like on a multiple choice test or something, you might be asked, does this count in GDP? And then you, you got to be able to recognize it. Does it or not? Okay. Intermediate goods do not count. Okay, so when Ford buys tires or batteries, their purchase of those things do not add to GDP, at least under the expenditures approach. However, what happens when you buy the car? You're also buying the tires and the batteries, so that's when it counts. Okay, so intermediate goods do not count. Another example: KFC buys chickens. When they buy chickens, there is there is production being done, there is value to it, and it is getting sold. But we don't add it to GDP until you guys buy the chicken. Make sense? Okay, so intermediate goods do not count. That's number one. That's right. No, it does, because. The, the price of the chicken is incorporated into what you pay for the chicken. So the farmer's production is counted. I got an example in a minute. Actually, I got it right now. Okay? By the way, you better pick your, your pick. Remember on the announcements it said to make sure you go into whatever it's called and pick your senior portrait that you want. Okay? You can end up like that. All right. So, Rachel, this will help, I think. Okay? We're looking at what it takes to make a shirt, okay? The cotton farmer produces cotton that's valued at $1. So far, so good? For the shirt. Yeah, for the shirt, okay? You, you keep up with this. You're going to keep up the total. So right now, we have produced a dollar's worth of stuff. Sure. Just keep a little in your margin. I'll just add it up as we're, as we're going. The cotton farmer sells it to the textile mill, okay? The textile mill adds $4 worth of value to the shirt. Okay, so add that four dollars. Okay, the textile mill sells the cloth to the shirt manufacturer, who then turns it into a shirt by adding seven dollars worth of value to it. So add the seven. Okay, the wholesale shirt maker sells it to the retail store. The retail store then adds eight dollars worth of marketing and, you know, the, just making it there available to you, their profit, etc. Eight dollars of value. So what's all that add up to? Twenty. Good. The whole shirt costs 20. So when we buy it for 20, we are counting all of these steps anyway. Okay? Does that make sense? Well, if you had to travel all over the world to wherever where everything is actually produced, would that cost you a lot? 
Like to go get that shirt and that skirt, you would probably have to go to two different countries. It would be very expensive for you to do that, right? Well, stores provide us with a service. The service is making sure it's all there for you and they charge for it. That's all it is. All right. So we avoid multiple counting by only counting the final price of $20. Okay, so intermediate goods, we're not counting. Not in our method, okay? Number two, what is not counted? Secondhand sales, okay? In 1986, I bought this awesome car. It's a Cutlass Supreme Brome. It was a 1980 model. Oh yeah, that's me. And that was an awesome car. I paid $2,000 for it, okay? When I paid 2000 for it, did it add to GDP? No. Uh -uh. It got, it got added to GDP in 1980. So you can't add it twice, all right? Here's the caveat, though. This guy, the salesman, if he earns a commission for selling me that car, he just earned income, right? Wages. Uh, that was a Christmas dance. I was posing in front of my car for the Christmas dance. I'm 16. My brother says I was 40 years old as a teenager, so I suppose. Well, yeah, who do you think, uh, never mind. All right, I was just going to say, who do you think was in charge of going to the store to buy party supplies? All right, so this is, uh, this is what you got to remember. Rent, wages, interest, and profits add to GDP, okay? Feel good? All right. Oh. A couple years ago, I bought this Jeep, okay? After I bought this Jeep, the economy tanked. So why did it tank? I should have bought a new one. Had I bought a new Jeep, everything would have been great. Um, I do have something to add to this, though. The guy I bought this from, he used the money I gave him to put down as a down payment on a house. So even when you do buy things used, you're still helping the economy just not directly. Does that make sense? So even though none of these things count directly towards GDP, all spending finds its way to add to GDP. Okay, maybe just a portion of it, but everything you spend is going to add to GDP. By the way, do you all know this guy? Yeah. All right, number three. Number three, purely financial transactions do not add to GDP. So when you guys buy stocks and bonds or or some other financial investment, that does not add to GDP. That's, that does nothing, okay? Except you've got, where's the stockbroker? Maybe he's not here. Oh, well, if, if the stockbroker earns a commission, his income would add to GDP because you're paying for a service, all right? Because there's no production. So, uh, this stands for certificate of deposit. Not that outmoded way of actually listening to music. So even if your investment only gains $10,000? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the purchase. Okay, but once that stock purchase, then that earnings is going to get added to GDP under the rent, wages, interest, profits. Okay? We're only looking at uh, expenditures today. Okay? Um, what else do I want to say? Oh, here you, here you go. If you, di if you did buy 100 shares of Apple stock and Apple has that money, what do you think they do with it? Yeah, they're going to invest it elsewhere. So again, roundabout, this will add to GDP. Okay, just your actual purchase of stock does not. By the way, look at this guy. Transfer payments. I told you these don't add to GDP, right? But what if you use your money from the government to go buy something? Then it would add to GDP. Okay. So any welfare payments, unemployment payments, social security payments, disability payments, none of those add to GDP directly, okay? The reason they don't is because there's no purchase being, you know, taking place with that payment, okay? It's just the government giving you money. So no GDP, everybody good? All right, we gotta get to the rest of these before we end. Unreported legal business activity. Have any of y'all ever made money and not reported it to the government? Okay, all of that stuff that y'all did that you're thinking of probably added value. You, you were paid for it, it was a valuable service or whatever, but you didn't get paid. So there's a lot of that that goes on. Unreported legal business activity does not count because you're not reporting it. So examples, this girl, she made 100 bucks babysitting. Did she report it? No, there's a payment made 
for a, a valuable service, okay, it was produced this year, whatever, but it doesn't add to GDP because it doesn't get reported. There's no way to add it. Could be. I don't know why they have to be Hispanic, but a maid, yeah, or any of your other servants, okay. Waitress, okay, waitress earns a tip. Maybe she reports it, maybe she doesn't, okay. Well, uh, when you do your taxes, you just report it. You say, oh, I made this amount of money, but nobody would because there's no way of knowing. I mean, why would the government know? Last one, uh, Saul. Saul does some legal work that he doesn't report, you know, a little bit of under the table type stuff, okay? None of that would add to GDP because none of it's reported. Here we got it. Now, check it out though. She takes her babysitting money and she goes and she buys something really cool at the store. That's how it gets counted in GDP, okay? All right, number six, illegal business activity. Yes, sir. Yeah, she's not adding to GDP at all, okay? Check this guy out. All right, so illegal business activity. So this is like the crime stuff, okay? These are things that people do that are illegal, all right? But a lot of what they do still generates, you know, it's like, it's like you're buying something maybe, like, like if somebody were buying drugs, okay? There's production taking place, there's value to it apparently because the market's paying it, but it doesn't add to GDP, okay? All right, what about this? Anybody know what that is? That's a prostitute. Okay, back to it. Uh, all of these things in involve market transactions, right? But none of them add to GDP. Okay, so that's important to note. This is actually very interesting. Remember all those problems that Greece had? Okay, they went into such bad debt, they couldn't pay their debts. The EU was upset with them, Germany especially, because they had to bail them out. The reason they went into such debt is because the EU has rules about deficit spending. You can only spend up to like a 3% level of your, of your gross domestic product. So when Greece ran into that trouble where they couldn't borrow anymore, they added this to their GDP. So in Greece, they actually do add all of these things to GDP, okay? So we call all of that the underground economy. Some of it's illegal activity. Some of it's legal activity that just doesn't get reported, okay? None of it actually gets reported. So look at that, it's a trillion dollars. So we could, we could boost our GDP by just adding all of this to it. This would be a trillion dollars worth of stuff. It's crazy, right? So the number one underground economy as a percent of GDP is Greece. USA is down here. And actually, I think there's, a, there's one big reason why things don't get reported, okay? Would you be more or less incentivized to report your earnings with high taxes. Okay. If you have high taxes, you want to hide income, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So these are all those high, high tax European nations. So they're going to have a bigger underground economy because there's incentive to hide it. Okay. How about this? Non-market transactions. So there, there was a study one time that calculated what a what a housewife would cost if you had to pay individual people to do all her services. And it was like several hundred thousand dollars a year. If you had to hire a full-time maid, a nanny, um, what else does a housewife do? Cook, there you go, all of those things. All of those things, it would be very expensive, okay? So work in your own household does not add to GDP. All right, if you hire somebody to do the work and it then gets reported, that would add to GDP. So one of the best ways to, to really get the economy moving would be to hire somebody to do everything around your house, okay? Number eight, this one straightforward, we already talked about this. U.S. corporations doing business overseas, okay? They're, they're doing productive work, but it's outside of our country. So it doesn't, yeah, gross national product, but not GDP. Okay, y'all feel good? Okay. We don't have time for GDP, man, but let's do quiz these ourselves real quick. McDonald's buys potatoes. Uh, yes. No. 
It only counts when the French fries are sold. Okay. Tattoo business buys is, buys ink for tattoos. No, that doesn't count because the ink is part of the thing that you're buying. Okay. What about when a tattoo business buys needles? Hmm. This, this would be part of investment. Okay. Because this is consumed by the actual process of doing it. Yeah, the needle is actually, when I, when I say the needle, I'm talking about the vibrating thing, not the little tip, but the whole contraption. It's reused over and over and over. What? Not the tip. Oh, okay. Well, it might be. You never know. When Tom Thumb buys Spam to sell it to you. And not, not, okay. It'd be consumption when it's sold. If it never did sell at the end of the year, then it would be investment, okay? So it just depends. More information is needed. Oh, it's going to. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to count, but it might not count when they buy it. It might count when you buy it. Or it might count at the end of the year when nobody bought it. Okay? Yeah, whatever. You need more information. That's what I'm t telling you. It depends. Popsic Popsicle maker buys sticks. Uh-uh. No GDP. BL buys me a computer. Yes, that's investment, okay? Because I use it to provide y'all with the, the excellent service of an education. Ice cream that Brahms buys. Nope. No, it gets it gets counted when you buy a Sunday. So, Juan, do you know what a Sunday is? Okay. What? It's just an ice cream dish. It's like a couple scoops of ice cream, maybe a cherry on top, and some whipped cream, chocolate syrup, all that stuff. Okay. Bakery buys an apple. No. You buy a new windshield wiper for your car. Yes. yes. What about unsold 2013 cars on January 1st, 2014? That's when you count them as inventory. Yeah, that's a yes. How about our work? That's Ern Schumacher. What is it? That does not count because it's volunteer. Okay. How about this? All right. Caitlin. Your question is this, Laura, Kimby, and me, we each buy matching t-shirts for $10 each. The t-shirt shop, t-shirt shop in Dallas bought each shirt for $3 from a shirt maker in Honduras. What is the total impact on US GDP? It's like a word problem. By the way, the shirts are leaving Chicago on a, on a southbound train. Another train is leaving St. Louis at the same time. Okay, okay, never mind. What's the total? Well, there's three of them, first of all. Okay. So we got 30 is consumption, but. <laughs> 21 total. We're subtracting the imported value of $3. Oh, so this is your net export? Well, this is an export. It's consumption, but then part of the consumption is imported. So we remove the imports. Okay. So think of it this way, we're adding, remember we're adding SIGX, consumption plus investment plus government plus the exports, okay? Okay, the consumption was 30. In the, our example here, we don't have any investment, we don't have any government, but we do have net exports of negative nine, or nine, so a grand total of 21 for our GDP, okay? All right, good. All right, farmersonly.com hooked Aaron up with Manuelito. Caroline, too, very awkward. Earn paid farmersonly.com, a US company, $20. How does that impact US GDP? Was, did Caroline go here? I don't remember if she was here or Ursuline. Yeah. No, Earn, she went to JP2. Oh, never mind. I thought it was her. All right. So the grand total here would be consumption of $20. Have you seen those commercials? Number one, where does that company get money to advertise? Yeah. Who uses that? Farmersonly.com. Do you know what I'm talking about? I've heard of it. Not advertising. You don't need to be lonely. Call farmersonly.com, right? Yeah. All right. I worked 40 hours on the remodel of a church in Nicaragua. Did my efforts add to Nicaragua's GDP? No. It's all volunteer. All right, good. Does this work count? Yeah. $6. Yeah. $20 an hour.